Hi everyone, Olivia and I are going to show you today a forearm exercise which targets this area primarily, although it also gets parts of the hand and parts of the shoulder as well. But if you have any kind of pain phenomenon happening in this area of the forearm here, and most typically this comes from too much keyboard work, then this exercise seriously will be a game changer for you. Um, we have had literally hundreds of people with advanced RSI. One woman had RSI for 14 years continuously. In fact, I know it sounds completely unbelievable. This is the case. I did a standing wall version of this exercise for her and she came away from the wall and she had this strange look on her face and she shook her hand like this and she, and she gripped her fist a few times and I said, what's the matter? And she said, that's the first time I haven't been in agony for 14 years, which, which was a pretty amazing story. Anyway, that may not happen to you, but uh, <clears throat> if you do this with care, it can absolutely be a life-changing experience for you. Okay, no more introduction, let's get into it. The first position is this, Olivia will stretch her arm out as though she was doing the floor bicep stretch. So if that exercise is not known to you, you might want to look at that video by itself. She stretches her arm out, she turns the arm over so the back of the wrist is resting on the floor and then watch this, she shifts her hips away from this arm before starting to roll backwards into position which places this whole bicep line under stretch. And I'll move out of her way. And as you can see here looking down on her body from this camera in particular, you can see that her arm is about 45 degrees away from the line of her spine and that's what we want. So then she rolls into it so that she's feeling a sufficiently tight stretch through this whole front bicep line and that's where she rests and she tries to let herself relax and you'll also notice that she's holding this shoulder away from the floor by using this arm in the push-up position. And now my part. Notice I position the center of my body roughly opposite her hand here and then I move my arm like this before lifting her hand up and grasping her wrist like this. But if you notice this forearm and this arm we're actually in the same plane here. That's important because the, there are two actions that have to be done at the same time here in order to bring on the stretch. The first action is using this grip on my hand around her, the bottom of her hand and, and in behind her wrist, I turn my hand like this so that the inside part of my hand is pressing on her knuckles here and I keep moving her arm into flexion until she says stop. And, and notice how carefully and slowly I move then. This is critical. Then I roll her hand and arm away from her. Now you'll notice the hand position started, then the forearm got involved and last of all the shoulder. Tell me when to stop. Stop. I adjust my position slightly and I'm going to place my other hand here, we call it this the comfort hand. It just feels nicer to know exactly where the person is behind you because remember she can't see me. And then I encourage her simply to breathe and to relax in this position. And also to this hand here I can feel when this muscular area here goes soft and that tells me that for her relaxation isn't just a concept, she's actually doing it. She's let her body go soft and that is essential, that's step one. Step two, once she let her body go soft for a moment or two, is she tries to straighten her wrist, as in pressing the fingers back against me towards the floor. That's the first contraction. Please do that now. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. She does nothing. And the second contraction, she tries to roll this hand back to me, or another way of thinking about this is, She's trying to roll the thumb side of her hand back to the floor against my resistance. And as in all contractions, nothing must move if you're doing it properly. Three, two, one, stop. Now, the critical next step. I say take in a breath 
and let your tummy go soft as you breathe out, but you don't let the setup position change. Take in another breath. Let your body go soft as I take you a bit further into flexion. And you'll notice that I've got the weight of my knee behind the forearm going into my hand. This keeps it completely solid. Is that enough? Yep. And then I add the second movement, also noting that I don't let the flexion go at all. Say so stop. And again, I monitor her state of tension through the shoulder that I'm holding here. And I say to her, breathe and relax. Breathe and relax. So two things here. You keep the person in that position until you feel them go soft or 30 seconds elapses, whichever is the shorter of the two. Because no one should be held in this position for longer than half a minute or so the first time they try it. How does that feel, Danny? Excellent. Let us say she's been in that position now for about 45 seconds. I then very slowly, just watch how slowly this happens, I let this pressure off like this. And then I can feel by this point the tension's gone completely. So I can now place the arm on the ground like this. And then I encourage her to come out of the bicep part of the stretch, which is here, and then to sit up and Let's see what happened. Well, something to note here is that even though this was the part of the arm on the ground, she's got an, a, a pattern of redness through here that goes all the way up to here. It's a bit hard to see that on camera. It'll only last for a minute or two. But what that is, is new blood slamming into an area that it wasn't getting into before. And that's, that's the thing about tension held in particular places, which is not obvious. Anywhere in your body where you're holding a lot of tension, if you can't let that tension go, its blood supply is reduced compared to the rest of the body. And that can't be a good thing. And I think you wanted to say something too. I just wanted to make the point that this is a stepped approach. So I went into the bicep stretch first, mm -hmm. then we added some wrist flexion, and then we added the extra rolling of the arm in that way. You might find the first time you do it that just adding the wrist flexion to the bicep stretch is sufficient for you. So you just do the relevant contraction, re-stretch, come out. Um, so it's, it's completely scalable in terms of intensity. Don't go too hard too fast. That's such good advice. And, and another thing that's, that's related to that is the fact is you can't go back in time. And so if you hurt yourself or hurt your partner, there's no use to anyone. It is much better to do a softer version, a gentler version of any stretch, and then go back and do it a second time or a third time even in the one session because we found there's all sorts of advantages to doing that. Chief among them being you know exactly how much intensity you can handle. And, and that, that way when you feel that intensity again or even a bit more, it's not a shock to you. It's not a, an unknown thing. And that is the aspect of the experience for stretching which allows you to relax into it. If you don't know what it's going to feel like, you will protect yourself from it regardless. Mm. Look, give this one a go. My suggestion is watch it through a couple of times. There's lots of details in it. And then when you feel confident, make sure that you can position yourself exactly as I position myself in relation to her. <laughs> I'll tell a funny story. We have taught this exercise on hundreds of workshops, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. and it is not possible to apply this movement and this movement unless your arm is in the same plane as theirs. But how many times do you watch people mess it up? It's just amazing. Yeah. So look, give it a go. Let us know in the comments, please, um, how you find this. This really is an excellent exercise.